Hi, I'm Madonna Guy at New Leaf Natural Therapies and we're here with our Quantum Consciousness Practitioner, Rob Coombs. How are you? Good, thank you. So Rob's been doing some training the last... Six months. Six months in Quantum Consciousness Healing. Mm. So we just thought we'd have a little bit of a chat to you about it and what it can do for you and your family and your friends. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about it. Okay, so um, I've just completed a year uh, degree um, or diploma really in Universal Consciousness. Yes. And uh, what we mean by uh, we are as uh, universal conscious beings, we um, um, have an energetic self that is connected to all there is. So our human aspect is only one dimension of multiple dimensions of who we really are. So what I do with what I have learned with the work that we're doing is guide you down into a trance state to help you expand your awareness so you can open up that human portal that you are and expand um, and explore um, the, 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 the great landscape that you are connected to. And um, there's many dimensions that we can visit and call upon other aspects of ourselves that live in these dimensions to ultimately help us on our journey um, to, yeah, to really get into what our purpose here in this lifetime right. and also to heal aspects of ourselves like um, been doing work with um, emotions, yes. addictions, unexplained body pains, um, and even um, like family vibrations that have been uh, intergenerationally passed on to the next one. So we we um, take into account like the epigenetics of. Oh, things. very good. Yeah. 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 So with this process, yeah. so what would so what do you, what would the main things that someone be experiencing that would make them go right? I need treatment with universal consciousness healings. Um, people with a, a, a blockage in their life, um, they can't so not being it. able to move on from something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I explained, you know, we do things with emotions, and that's one of the most common um, topic that. Uh, yeah. Clients come and so see depression, us for, anxiety, yep, depression, anxiety, sabotaging grief, their life. Yep, sadness. Yep, self sabotage. That's um, we look at that and um, and like you mentioned, addictions. That's huge these that's days. That's massive. Yeah. yeah. So with addictions, you know, it doesn't mean uh, when we're working with addictions, uh, we're not just looking at the the major ones, things like uh, drugs, alcohol, and gambling. It yes. can be simply like just sugar. It can be things like caffeine. For myself, it was caffeine, so yep. I haven't had a coffee in about six weeks. Wow! Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> well, amazing, because... Um, it's like Georgia says, 10-day green tea challenge. 10-day green yeah, tea challenge. Yeah. You can do it. <laughs> um, from all the experiences that I've heard back and shared with um, clients, is that they don't go through the withdrawal symptoms. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's quite fascinating. Huh. Yeah. So it's like the caffeine receptors... A calm down somehow yeah, else. Yeah. See the way that we see Interesting. Yeah, the way that we see addiction is that the the substance or the behaviour that is the cause or the, the craving factor of what we seek is um, is only a bridge to a, a higher vibration of what we seek. So uh, you know a higher vibration can be joy, can be love, um, can be peace. And what these substances and behaviors allows um, to be a bridge to get to that right. vibration, but what it's actually doing is it's suppressing these lower vibrations, uh -huh. things like fear, guilt, hate, shame, anger, shame. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. And so it, it puts a blanket over it, but as soon as the, the um, substance wears off, they re-emerge. So what we do with our work is we guide, I guide you down into a trance state and we go to that space or event in your life where that is rooted in where that grief comes from. Do you know the difference between this treatment and, say, hypnotherapy? Like yeah, the, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So hypnotherapy uh, mainly works with the subconscious mind, and it's all about suggestion. Yes. So my suggestions, uh, I'm given while you're in the trance, say working with things in your subconscious mind, I'll suggest something to you. Right. Whereas with our work, we go beyond the subconscious and go into alternate realms of consciousness, parallel uh, realms even interdimensional um, realities right. and ultimately connecting with the consciousness of all there is to draw in any wisdom and insight and healing that we can bring back into this lifetime and live, our, live it in our daily life. So with the, uh, the addiction, we can go to any aspect of um, uh, those realms of consciousness 
to call upon an aspect of ourselves in that um, in that realm to share some wisdom and insight to help us raise our vibration ourselves without using a bridge like the substance or the behavior and helping us realize that we are that bridge right to that higher vibration we just got to look deep within ourselves to find it yes and transcend those lower vibrations that are keeping us in this uh, in that addictive state right yeah so the first treatment is quite a big treatment tell yep. us about that yeah the first treatment can be up to three hours and that's because for me and the client it's developing a trust and relationship relationship because firstly when we go into a transcendental state the client has to be prepared to go into that vulnerable state it's something you know if it's right. for the first time um, it's it's not new to them right so I've got clients who can't visualize is yep. that a problem doing haven't had any problems with okay. visualization um, for me and uh, what I've seen it's about trust right yeah um, the trust in myself to be able to guide the client down and the, the client themselves trusting that they can do it yeah and allow them to do it so we we use some imagery to help them relax and um, go into a uh, change the brainwave patterns into a lower um, wave so yes. they can get more relaxed and let go of their human aspect of themselves and what I mean by their human aspect that's their life experiences their their beliefs and their values and um, anything else that might be affecting them in like uh, relationships or in their environment so by allowing that human aspect to just step aside so we can go on an exploring right. journey so we can help this client heal themselves yes really yeah okay mm. and then subsequent visits you've got all sorts of cool little techniques yeah so the first initial is about three hours so it's all about helping you understand what it's all about right. and also to create that connection with the client and help them you know just to open up and share their story right why are they here what are they seeking um, the intention is also a big part of what they're seeking right um, the intention sets and that's why you like having a quick chat to clients before oh, you actually yeah. book them in for a treatment yeah. to make sure they're ready to yeah, make sure yeah. they're open and willing and yeah 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 and yeah. if they have any questions I can um, give them send them an email with some information send them um, probably to this video yeah actually and, um, is there a website that they can go to and have yeah. a look yeah there's um the institute of uh institute for quantum consciousness right and that there's about four or five videos on there by okay. their creator peter smith right and um yeah he explains it very um articulately and eloquently yeah. beautiful mm. so in the subsequent visits which are how long are those ones? The subsequent visit visits can be again it can be a, an hour to two hours yes um, the I find the most impactful part of the journey is um, when we come back from the journey and it's all about the integration and the debriefing so right simple question is like so how do you see your life going to be different now knowing what you've just learned about who you really are and why you're here yeah what are you gonna do with that you know that's the big question you know and do people often yeah. have an answer for that or do they need to go away oh and, yeah oh they do yeah they go away they go away and um, yeah it's because it is a life-changing experience yeah. um, and I wouldn't be doing it if um, I didn't see the value in it yeah because um, I, I had my first experience about three years and I was just like that's me right I've just got to I've got to do this work. and can you tell us about that experience for you yeah absolutely so um, my first experience was, was with um, Peter Smith and um, as I went down into the trance state and um, opened up my human uh, portal I ended up in the interdimensional realm where an aspect of me from um, another dimension came through as just the being of light and vibration mm -hmm. and um, he gave me the key he gave me a key that said this is the light you have the light within you oh, wow. that, and that's all you'll need for your journey throughout the, oh, that's goosebumpy I know yeah, yeah. and um, the beautiful thing about this because once you lift that veil of forgetfulness of who you truly are connected to all there is yeah you have access to that so it's like a muscle mm. so the more you do it 
with the intention yeah. you can connect to those other aspects on right. those journeys so what I um, after the sessions I ask the clients you know the best way to integrate it is to write about it journal it yeah. draw a picture of it and even express it as art you know express yeah. it as art because of me it is so meaningful it's a meaningful experience that is so personal to you yeah so yeah and um, I've yeah had um, a few art pieces come back to me um, via email and that of what this is what you know their words this is what it looked like this is where we went Wow yeah how mm. cool oh it's amazing it's beautiful so what are the what words would you give to the things that people would begin book in for for subsequent visits like what do you call them oh subsequent like a subsequent visit like you've mentioned the um, shadow realm is that right um, no 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 but the memory uh, the what we're doing with um, so the shadow aspect is uh, the our on unconscious environment so um, we right. have yeah we have an unconscious environment that um, that is you know uh, those parts of us that we don't accept about ourselves but we can see it in other people's and we can end up projecting those aspects of the parts that we don't like onto others and those are the types of people that we find annoying right yeah yeah however with my journey through shadow work and doing this work that unconscious aspect is much greater than we believe you know yeah um, and there was once a time where the shadow aspect was something to be feared because you're going into the unknown yeah and now um, once that fear has been transcended there's only excitement because right. there because um, you know that there's something to learn that's going to be worth bringing into this life. Hmm. Okay. So it's like, when's my next go? Yeah. And I offer to clients if they want to come back as um, if something else bubbles up, just like the the um, the analogy of an onion. Yes. How once we peel one layer back, yes. another one can present itself. So that can be. Uh, something else that's happened in the past yeah or it can be something that's happened like tomorrow so yeah and that, that offer that's again that's offering another challenge that we can learn from yeah but if we um, and people don't often understand this that, right. that if we yeah. actually get through the emotional gear and yeah, learn yeah. from it and grow mm -hmm. from it then we mm -hmm. actually yeah, yeah. have potential to do yeah. anything we want to do uh -huh. so the even the relationships in our environment that we're we're in can really put us back into that lower vibration that we came out of so yeah. we can lose quite easily our insights yeah so that's why it's so um, uh, what I do for my clients is record the experience as well so they can I put it on a USB stick so I can take it home yeah and listen to it whenever they feel like it to help you know because I've had clients that you know we have a three-hour session and they only can remember like half an hour yeah so there's so much um, pieces of their puzzle in there to help yeah. them on their journey yeah yeah I know when uh, I had my first session, it was very much about shame for me at about four years old. It, it was yeah. just there like a yeah. huge, big, fat brick sitting on my yeah. chest, and I could not move forward with it. Yeah. And it was something that I had not really yeah. recognized. Like that timeline yeah. had always shown up with kinesiology balances, but it's been interesting since then because that has shifted. Mm -hmm. Now the next layers come through. Yeah. <laughs> I always do. There's yeah. always something to work on. Um, and you know that's the beauty of it as well there is always something to be done yeah um, we always can find something to transcend to get to a higher state and um, that higher state what we do with that is we share that knowledge we share that wisdom you know yeah. we're not only a portal but we're like the visica Pisces yeah where information comes up and down up and down up and, down. and you find that more people are wanting this sort of work these days yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and they're understanding that if they clear some of the emotional, spiritual, genetic, memory, shadow sort of work, then their health can improve as well. So it's Absolutely, not just emotional yeah. gear. Um, you know, you change your emotions, you change yourself. So, yeah. and where that emotion's coming from is usually something that's happened in the past. Um, and also it could be something that's carried on from yeah. past lives. So we do past lives work as well in our own way. So when we go into, um, if you want to seek something that's 
you know, it just can't be explained. Yeah. Um, like I've had Annette like as a client yeah. and she'd been carrying around um, a lot of fear yeah. and unexplained fear. And um, we discovered that that fear was being carried on from a past life that had been murdered for um, her beauty. Right. So um, this aspect of her was still, uh, that vibration was carried through into this lifetime. But once we helped that other aspect of herself in the past, to transcend that fear that she was trapped mm. in and despair, yeah. and see where um, what she could offer the the past of Annette, that whole changed her life experience. Wow! So it's a what we call a ripple effect, yes. changing the perception of our past. So once the fear is gone, yeah. there, and you're not holding on to that, I suppose that really does open up so many avenues if you're not fearful of moving yeah. forward if you're not fearful of being seen if you're not fearful yeah. of you know putting yourself yeah. out there you have a um a personal experience that you can uh you understand that comes from love yeah you know because the fear the fear is the inversion of love and All that's comes what, back to yeah. love yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's amazing yeah and um to hold that vibration of love we seek enlightenment so yes. we go, we transcend those lower vibrations to get those aha moments. I get it. I see what it means. So then thinking about enlightenment in this plane on this earth, which people would see as yogis living up in the yeah. mountains in India and, you know, yeah. not being able to attain that. Mm. How would you explain that to someone who just wants to live on the earth, but still wants to be reaching for their best goals and spiritual self? Um, oh, how would I um, like explain it to them? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, because yeah. I know, for example, yeah. I had a client years ago, mm -hmm. she was uh, working in an industry where she was earning oodles of money, but mm -hmm. she had quite a spiritual self and she had this real guilt about earning money, yeah. but she also knew she was a spiritual being because mm -hmm. she had about six spirit guides that would communicate with her regularly. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't until she went to another spiritual healer who mm -hmm. said to her, gosh, you're lucky with all these guides. And she had all this guilt around making yeah, money yeah. and uh, the guide said no 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 no. this is what you're here on the planet to do you're doing this job your guides are helping you do this yeah. job that's yeah. why you're making so much money yeah she went yeah, yeah right yeah um yeah don't feel guilty for the um the money that you make with doing light work you know um working with um in a, a higher vibration um because that's an exchange of energy yeah. Rather than it being right, so people yeah. should think of money as an exchange of energy. Well, well, yeah, you think of the word currency. Currency is an air, an energy flow. So that energy flow has to happen, otherwise it becomes stagnant. Or right. Or you get a, you get with a bad experience of that flow of energy, um, or a belief on that, that can create the mindset that you see it as a negative thing. Right. And that negative thing is something that you're projecting onto it. So. Again, you got to go back within yourself to see where this negative, where that message came right. from, so you can see it for what it truly is. Okay, and then that negative energy can impact on the immune system and on the health of all sorts of you organs in the body, and really, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, when we talk about the systems of the body, um, we can do a, what's called a body echo because. Um, on a quantum level, the body is just all energy. You know, yes. on a subatomic part, you know, with all the subatomic particles moving and the electrons all moving. So, as an energetic being, that energy, that flow of energy, is not working, you know, as it should. It's not in balance. Right. So, what we aim to do is, you know, seek what is happening on the energetic level to transcend whatever there that needs to be transcended. Right. And help the body heal itself. Okay. All, low, all lower vibrations that we carry within us, whether it's in our emotional environment, our intellectual environment, our spiritual environment, all seek one thing that we found on our research, and that's to be transcended and raised to a high vibration. Right. There's nowhere else to play that go. Just like the ocean has a waveform, so does reality. That's a holographic image of all there is. Right. So the waveform with lower vibration and higher vibration, you've just got to, for our purpose to grow and evolve, we just got to complete the waveform, yeah. And that's on a multi-dimensional level through the human aspect, the the our past life aspect, our soul level, and our spiritual level right. as well. So there's so much we can do with this work, and it's so new. And um, I'm just so. How long has Peter Smith been working with it? How like how um, long has he been developing the process? This the universal consciousness um, has been happening about 
a year. The quantum consciousness work is three years. Wow, he's, so it really is quite new. It is new, yeah. yeah. And um, he's been, he's he started off as a banker, right? We just all um, in, in the financial game right. where he um, ended up trying um, hypnotherapy and that was his ticket, you know, to get a, a, a change of perception and how he could live his life better. And he went down the hypnotherapy path and then into past lives. Right. And from past lives, he created his own school because he's he had the insight that hypnotherapy wasn't um, effective enough. Yeah. Um, and rather than, he, he then he created the school called Hypnoenergetics because he saw and understood that we're all energetic beings. Yeah, and there was something more yeah. than just and, hypnotherapy. And, and, yeah. and, and we, we have portals that um, allow us to gain access to um, those aspects of ourselves that are beyond our subconscious yeah. mind where we believe yeah. where things can be trapped in. Yeah, and I think from my perspective with hypnotherapy, uh, with kinesiology, I've found that people who say are addicted to things like alcohol or cigarettes or drugs or something, mm. once I start working on the unconscious brain, yeah. the addictions can come back. Yeah. Because it feels to me in kinesiology terminology mm -hmm. like hypnotherapy sort of suppresses the urges. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily get to the underlying cause nah. of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Excellent. So yeah. from a mechanical perspective, what happens in a session? Um, so after we have our um, a discussion of what the client looks is looking for, we set the intention. Of course, yes. the intention is the... Um, uh, like the guiding light that calls upon all those other aspects of ourselves to be um, to help us on our journey. Yes. Um, so the client lies down on the massage table and um, on their back, and I help them to relax and guide them down into a deeper state of relaxation, and then to eventually into a an expanded state of awareness. And they'll be there for about two, three hours, yeah. and. Um, for the initial, the, yeah, for, yeah. And, and so I'm asking, I'm helping the client um, go, like I'm guiding them through their journey and asking them questions to help. Um, trigger memories or trigger? Uh, not really trigger member, memories to allow the experience to unfold and help them um, get more deeply involved with it. So it draws out whether it be the colors, whether it be the imagery, whether it be a, yeah, like a memory or um, uh, the energy of a uh, uh, other self, like a being that comes forward. Yeah. Um, and okay, and I ask the, the, the client, you know, how do they present? How does it feel? What are you hearing? Yeah. What do you see? And those are just the leading questions. And once that that connection has been made, okay, let's ask more. Let's ask more. Why have they come forward to you? And um, Let's and make it's all about making exchange of mm. energy. So and that energy can be, we've had, we have other aspects of ourselves that come forward in a lower vibration or a higher vibration. If they're in a higher vibration, then they've got something they can share with us with our intention that we see. If they're in a lower vibration, that could be an aspect of ourselves that are in the past or past life that need some wisdom and healing to help right. raise their vibration. And once. Well, like the shame for me, that's a real low, yeah, low. Yeah. that's the lowest, yeah, just yeah. about, it's, yeah. it's um, right yeah, down yeah. there. Yeah, with David yeah. Hawking's work, um, the lowest vibration calibrated for emotions is shame. Yeah. So there's no... Yeah, it no doesn't lower. fit. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty no much no. death is yeah. worse. Yeah. yeah. There's no, but, you know, that's, I find with my own personal experience with shame being yeah. such a massive thing, um, that's where the greatest insight can come from. Yeah. Yeah. One of my friends was telling me the difference between guilt and shame. Guilt is when you know you've done something wrong and you yeah. feel bad for it, but shame is when other people make you feel bad for something yeah. you don't yeah. really have any control over, like your size or your weight or your eye colour or the way you look or the way yeah. you make them feel, yeah. or, you know. And when do those events happen in your life? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Quite often, you know, yeah. what, zero yeah. to three years yeah. old. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we help the, that's... That's where the biggest, I find, um, that's where the biggest healing happens yeah. and with the greatest insight happens when we really expand it out into the multidimensional reality that we're, we're connected to. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that is absolutely fabulous. Anything else you'd like to finish with? Mm. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, there is. Um, all I, I help the clients understand on an experiential level that within them they hold everything they ever need in their life. All they need to do is remember it. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful. <laughs> yeah. It is. And so, scary for some people. Yeah, it can be. They go, how can um, I be in such a mess if I know everything I need to know? Yeah. But that's yeah. all life just yeah. gets in the way yeah. of those, knowing. Those are beliefs that are keeping you in that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. We sabotage ourselves every day. <laughs> we do. Beautiful. Okay, hopefully that's interesting and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>